You're listening to BioTalk with Rich Bendis, the only podcast focused on the biohealth capital region. Each episode, we'll talk to leaders in the industry to break down the biggest topics happening today in biohealth. Hi, this is Rich Bendis. I'm your host of BioTalk. And we have a very interesting guest that is from the southern part of the biohealth capital region from Charlottesville, Virginia. We have Dr. Amory Grammer, who's the co-founder and CSO of Ample Biosolutions. Dr. Grammer, welcome to Biotalk. Thank you, Rich. I'm excited to be here today. And do you mind if I call you Amory? Go ahead. Okay, because we have a lot of doctors that appear on this show. Well, I'm a PhD doctor. That's, that's a, a real doctor, though. Doctor. Well, thank you. <laughs> but we really are getting um, many more people coming up from Virginia now. When I say up from Virginia, uh, I think it's because the biohealth capital region is starting to uh, eliminate the bridges and the rivers and the state lines and the borders. And you're a great example of that. And because you mentioned to me that you've been to the Biohealth Capital Forum since its inaugural year five years ago. I was very excited to be invited. And I presented at the first meeting when it was MetaMune. And I made a lot of collaborations, some of which have turned into business ventures. So I love coming up here and I appreciate the synergy and the invitation. Well, thank you. So what we're going to do for our listeners is to really go into a little bit of your personal background which sets the tone for the rest of our interview we're going to be doing with you. So, Amory, tell us a little bit about your life. Well, I grew up in Northern Virginia, in Vienna, went to high school in Arlington, was very fortunate to get a junior fellowship at the NIH right out of high school. So I was exposed to working in the laboratory, exposed to translational research in medicine. Then I went to the University of Virginia, fell in love with Charlottesville, got my bachelor and master's degree there. That's part of the reason I wanted to found my company in Charlottesville. It's a fantastic place to live and very supportive of the biotech community. Ventured to Texas to get my PhD, UT Southwestern Medical Center at Dallas. It was a very strong school in the graduate sciences, especially in immunology. Then I was recruited to the NIH, which was very exciting to come home to this capital region and to form a laboratory there focused on the beginnings of my research, looking at genes that go wrong in lupus patients and how to fix that. And then what institute was it within NIH that you were recruited to? I was in the Arthritis Institute. Oh, you know, they have these big names, right. NIAMS. NIAMS, I know. We work with all of the institutes based on our Entrepreneur in Residence program. But I'm probably an arthritis patient as well. Not a patient, but I think at my age, everybody gets a little bit of arthritis. They do, but that is different than the autoimmune arthritis yes. that the institute is mostly focused on, which is rheumatoid arthritis and all of what we call RAIDs, the rheumatic, autoimmune, inflammatory diseases, of which lupus is one of those. How long did you spend at the NIH? I was there about 10 years. So I got there in 1999, right before the dawn of the new millennium. Do you remember when we were all afraid that our computers were not going to work on New Year's Day? Yes. So that's when I set up the laboratory. It was called the B-cell biology group. I also ran the flow cytometry facility and had a collaboration with Lou Stout and the NCI, who was really the pioneer of looking at gene expression using microarrays. And he made homemade chips. And it was a very exciting time to be there. I was there when the genome was sequenced and when the announcements were made. That's exciting. And then how did you develop your interest in lupus? So it's an interesting story. As a graduate student... As I told you, my background was in chemistry and pharmacology. So I got to Texas, and I was working in an immunology laboratory and looking for molecules that were really driving the development of plasma cells, which we all get normally when you get immunized. You make antibodies that protect you from infection for your entire life. And one thing people don't realize is that's the beauty of plasma cells. They go to your bone marrow, and they stay with you your entire life. But if something goes wrong in autoimmunity like lupus, same thing. If you make plasma cells, but now they're against you. They're with you for your entire life. So I was looking at interactions between cells and the molecules that were driving that, and I discovered CD40 ligand on B cells and its role in secondary lymphoid tissues like lymph nodes and driving those plasma cells. 
In those days, I asked around all of my friends who were doctors and fellows and worked through the IRBs to collect blood and be able to see what diseases had very high expression of this molecule. I discovered CD40 ligand on B cells, and lupus was on the top of the charts. So that's really how I got started. But then once I got into it, I realized it was a disease that primarily affects women. It's much more serious in women of color, African-American and Hispanic. Happens much earlier. The mortality rate at a young age is much more severe. And at that point, there were no drugs approved by the FDA for lupus. All of the drugs were very old, like prednisone and methotrexate and things like that. Even now in 2019, we've only had one drug approved in the last... 60 years. So that was a driving force to try to understand why lupus patients were getting sick and to try to figure out smart bullet modern biologic ways to intervene with that. And so before I leave the NIH and go into Ample, the company you founded, I understand you won the NIH Institute Director's Award. Thank you very much. That was a big honor when I had my laboratory there. And what was it for? Thank you for asking. I received it for my study of the signaling mechanisms and genes that were being altered in lupus. And very specifically, I was working on signaling through CD40, which was bound by the molecule that I discovered, and looked at the interaction of these big adapter molecules and the signaling molecules that were happening afterwards, and especially one transcription factor that was really involved in driving the choice to become a plasma cell. So it was a big honor. Well, congratulations. Thank you. So when did you get the entrepreneurial bug to start a company? So I think it started when I was at the NIH. At that time, there was a big bed to bench side, remember that word, initiative. Mm -hmm. And I was the PhD side of that. There was no entrepreneurial program in residence at that time, but there were a lot of programs bringing in entrepreneurs from local biotechs, interactions with pharmaceutical companies. As a graduate student, it never really dawned on me to think about that. So I got exposed to it. And then I started doing some research and realized that as a research scientist, I was an entrepreneur. I was always doing things that nobody had ever done before. I was putting together teams internationally to get things done. I was never afraid of the process or doing new things. Though I always say in science, to make the best discoveries, you have to keep inventing new methods because what you want to discover, how to get there might not even exist. So it really started at the NIH And then as I progressed, was trying to figure out where to start the company. At that time, there was no organization like exists now in this region to support, but there was in Virginia, Virginia Bio, also Charlottesville, I think, as my second hometown. So it was a natural fit to start it there. And then how did you determine what you were going to found your company around? And then how did you come up with the name Ample? Well, the name is a combination of myself and my co-founder, A.M. for Amory, which is my first name, and Pell, Peter E. Lipsky, who is my co-founder. And so the joke is we're not just adequate, we're ample. And ample also in German means light. So we're bringing light to a new problem. And we have a parallel uh, 501c3 called Relight, Reimagine Lupus Investigation Therapy and Education. I'll just give a little plug here. We have an event on July 27th at the Ashburn Evergreen Complex. That's a celebrity soccer match. It's called Kick Out Lupus, and it's all about bringing awareness to lupus. And you can go to the Relight website to find out more information. What's the date of that again? July 27th at the Ashburn Evergreen Soccer Complex. Okay, and what's the website? Relight, R-I-L-I-T-E dot org. Okay, listeners, go to that soccer match. Support lupus. Now, let's talk about the forming of the company and what did you go through having gone from NIH as a researcher to becoming an entrepreneur with a co-founder and what did you know about starting a business? How did you go about getting the advice you needed to start the business? Did you have any mentors that assisted you in this process? So you asked me what was the subject. That was a natural extension of the work that I had been doing in academia. My co-founder, Dr. Peter Lipsky, has have been doing in academia, especially with the big need to try to figure out a way to bring new drugs to lupus patients. So we did that in a variety of ways. One was to look at drugs that were already FDA approved 
for other autoimmune conditions to see if we could reposition them into lupus. And we had a big win last fall with the first trial that we did on that. The second way was to understand all the genes that were involved in a way that I couldn't do in the 2000s because the technology just wasn't there to understand what genes were involved and identify the genes that are evident of a patient getting worse or flaring and also matching up what gene expression is to what drug would actually help that patient because lupus is a very diverse disease with a lot of different manifestations. You could have skin disease, you could have cerebritis, you could have lung disease, you could have kidney disease. So in all diseases, but especially in lupus, one shoe doesn't fit all of the patients in terms of what's needed. So you asked about mentors and advice. I'm an academic scientist, no business training, never went to business school. But Virginia Bio has a very strong support program, and I was really overwhelmed with the advice and support of other entrepreneurs in the area. And it really was just by word of mouth showing up at the iLab, at Darden, at UVA, going to the beer and bio events, getting to know people, and getting advice about how to get started which we started in a coffee shop. When you come to visit me in Charlottesville, Rich, I'll take you there. It's called Seville Coffee. And a lot of the locals use it as sort of the original WeWork office. So the owners, as long as you keep drinking coffee and eating all day, they're happy to let you sit there. So we were there for a year. And then we were at the UVA Research Park for a couple of years. And then I relocated to my space in downtown Charlottesville, off of the mall, which is right across the street from the new building that Jaffrey is building, the new data science building wow. that's going to bring a lot of companies to Charlottesville that are focused in my area of data science and machine learning. So I look at myself as the anchor tenant for that. It's very exciting. You're a great ambassador for Virginia and Charlottesville. Thank you, Rich. And we thank Jeff Gallagher for introducing us so that we could get you engaged in this region, in this community. Absolutely. Jeff is a real champion for all entrepreneurs, regardless of where they're from. And I have to say the first time I went to a Virginia bio event was actually in the space that I'm in now. Wow. So it's amazing how life is. A you liked it so much you bought the product or took it over. Yeah. I think it was a good premonition. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Before we even got on the podcast here, we were talking a little bit about convergence. And I use the term convergence in this industry is that there's an interdependence today between people in the pharmaceutical, the biologic, the medical device, the artificial intelligence, electronic medical records, patient data, biomarkers, tools, all coming together. And when we were talking briefly, I thought that Ample, your company, was a great example for convergence within the biohealth industry. You want to talk about that a little bit? I'd love to, and I'm really glad that you picked up on that. As you know, most biotech companies are single-mindedly focused on one thing. And when Peter and I founded Ample, we continued our quantum approach to science in our company, as we always had in our research careers. We felt very strongly that to bring new drugs to lupus patients and to truly bring personalized precision medicine to patients, that we needed to have flexibility and a variety of expertises. So Ample is a technology company We have CRO capability, and we've developed a clinical genomic test in the immunology space to be able to predict a flare and match up the right drug with the right patient at the right time. Also developed a mobile app that can be paired with that test that could give you an alert and say, hey, it looks like you're getting worse. Why don't you go see your doctor, get that blood test, and get some decision support? So to be able to do that, we also brought together human resources, which I would say is the most important part of my company, is the variety of people that I've recruited and work tirelessly and with enthusiasm every day to get to our goal. So I've got specialists in clinical trials like Dr. Lipsky and his CRO team that design and implement the trials themselves in collaboration with pharmaceutical companies. I have a variety of systems biologists, immunologists, chemists that are working in tandem with people that have expertise in data science, bioinformatics, machine learning, AI, and math, and statistics, bringing them all together 
in one place, even though I have some people that work remotely. We have these big screens and we have virtual meetings. It's very synergistic. And I've always found in my research life that the biggest discoveries are made when you put people together with very different backgrounds who are very smart and creative and enthusiastic about a problem. They often can solve it faster and with ideas that none of the fields would have found on their own. Well, you're one of the living examples of convergence within our region of both technology and talent. Thank which you. has come together. How many people do you have, by the way? Um, we have a total of 20. We uh-huh. have 10 full-time employees and 10 variety of students, interns, and contractors. So I'll do a shout out. We're always recruiting great talent. So if you have expertise in any of the fields that I mentioned, anywhere from being in college all the way through graduate school and being a senior scientist, we're always looking for great people. And how would they find that? What's your website? Ample. Biosolutions, A M P E L, biosolutions.com, or they can just email info at ample.org. Great. And we'd love to hear from you. We'll try to get that at the end of the podcast again so we can remind people. One of the things that a lot of entrepreneurial companies go through is the challenge of financing their company. And so you're how old now? 10 years old? I'll be six years old on July oh, 13th. Oh, six years old. Okay. Six yeah. years old. And so it, through those six years, how have you funded the company to this point? And then what do you anticipate the needs of the company are in order to grow it in the future? Again, I'm very unusual in that Peter Lipsky and I own the company privately. So 100%. 100%. So um, I'm the majority owner, 51%. Peter's 49 We did that because we really thought that the beginning of the company was all about the convergence that you just mentioned and allowing all those ideas that come together. At this point, we've developed a tremendous amount of intellectual property. We've had several wins, and we'd like to expand rapidly to commercialize what we've developed, the things that I've mentioned, the personalized precision medicine, the drug repositioning clinical trials, the mobile app, and we've also developed a genomic platform and a variety of completely novel tools to assist researchers in analyzing any kind of gene expression data. So now we're looking for investors to grow Ample itself, which we see as the mothership. And then there'll be a variety of new companies, new co, that within several years we would be spinning out with a variety of purposes. So with the clinical genomic test that we've developed and the approach, which we call e-typing or endotyping, which means that we can group patients based on their gene expression and what drugs they'll respond to. So one market for that is pharmaceutical companies, which, as you know, have great trial failure, and they're trying to figure out how to fix that. Sometimes 50% of patients that are in a trial don't actually have the target or the pathway for the drug to inhibit. That's a big problem. And so our e-typing is a way to assist pharma in patient selection, getting the right patients in the trial. The second approach is decision support, as I mentioned, the direct patient-doctor relationship and the physician getting a top Five list of drugs that would be appropriate for that patient. And then the third market is health insurance companies who, especially to approve a very expensive new direct target biologic, they want evidence that it's going to work. And so they're very interested in this test as well for their own purposes. So you have a mix of revenue markets that you're generating your income from. That's correct. And currently, it's in pharmaceutical companies with the patient selection and also the CRO capabilities are our current revenues. But we're looking to grow into the direct-to-patient and the direct-to-health insurance company or payer. As and I that's am. where you would use the new capital to help you expand into the additional markets? Absolutely. All right. Have you raised any non-dilutive funding through any SBIR grants at this point? So we have raised money through grants. The SBIR we're working on right now. So we're very fortunate to receive funding from the John and Marsha Goldman Foundation in San Francisco, Mm -hmm. California. And they funded several grants from the beginning of the gene expression research all the way to our preclinical models, which is what pharmaceutical companies use in the early phases of drug development. And we also received support from the Lupus Research Alliance, originally called the Alliance for Lupus Research, which merged with the Lupus Research Institute. 
And we've received a variety of support in grants from pharmaceutical companies who have given non-restrictive grants for a variety of projects and publications. Well, as you're exploring the SBIR, that's one of the things that BHI does very well. We assist companies in SBIR pre-proposals, and we have a 46% success rate of winning for those people who work within our process. That so, sounds really exciting. Yeah, compared Sign to the national up. average for 21%. <laughs> so what we'd love to do is to find a way to get more of that national SBIR money into the BioHealth Capital Region and into Charlottesville. So we'd love to work with you on that. I would love to do that, Rich. Thank That's you. That's a good follow-up from this interview. So you've talked about some wins that you've had and some major accomplishments. What are the things you're most proud of with Ample at this point? The first thing I'm most proud of is the people that I've recruited and the things that they've accomplished. Several students is something people don't think of with biotech, but with our academic background from the beginning, we made a point of making collaborations with universities and students. So we have a relationship with GW and Keith Crandall and the Computational Biology Institute and their graduate students. We also have a strong relationship with the University of Virginia. And I'm looking to strengthen those relationships with other universities in the capital region. So, for example, one of our students, Haley Davis, submitted her work to Sigma Xi, which is an honorary professional scientific society. And she presented in Silicon Valley last fall, and she won first prize in physiology for the entire United States. And other students have had similar wins. So that's the first thing that I'm proud of is I've continued mentoring and developing young scientists. My hope is that they'll come. I'll be able to recruit them into Ample and to the New Coast. Some of them go on to graduate school and then come back to us. Some of them go on to medical school. The second thing I'm most proud of is the drug repositioning trial that we had a success with last fall. So in the beginning of Ample, Peter Lipsky and I developed a prioritization system to very methodically look at all FDA-approved drugs and rank them for their potential success in lupus. Our number one choice was Stellara, which is a drug that's made by Janssen and FDA approved for psoriasis. So Dr. Lipsky worked with Janssen. He worked his way up the company until he was talking to the CEO. We both have great perseverance and diligence. And they decided to do a trial to test it. So within six months, they kicked off a phase 2B trial, got very positive results last November, and they're in phase three now. And the results of that trial mean that any rheumatologist feels comfortable now writing a prescription for this drug, and health insurance companies are considering covering it, especially because of the dearth of drugs that are available in lupus. The third thing is the accomplishment in the personalized precision medicine. And this really expands beyond lupus, and you were asking about my business goals. What we've developed with the mobile app And with our clinical genomic test, we developed it for lupus because that was our first passion, but it's applicable for any autoimmune disease or even any disease. The mobile app, three quarters of the patient reported outcome questions are applicable to any disease, and then one quarter is plug and play. So we've done a proof of concept trial in lupus. With the clinical genomic test, it's the same approach that two-thirds to three-quarters of the genes will be things that will be broadly applicable in any autoimmune inflammatory disease, and 25% can be plug-and-play. So to get that to the point where we're able to be looking for partners to make the physical tests, so we're talking to companies like Illumina and Nanostring, other big companies, to physically make the test. And the goal to bring it to fruition to a reality within three years or so. I'm very proud of bringing that all together under one roof, being privately owned and with a small group of very passionate people that work extremely hard. You talk about passion and perseverance. I think some of these wins you're talking about may not appear big to a lot of other people. But when you talk about successes of these human resources you have and how you're mentoring them, that's one of the greatest successes you can have. Thank you. So congratulations on that. Also, some of the partners you have might be some of those potential investors. Janssen now has a presence in our region as they acquired one of the companies we work with over the last seven years, Benavir. Exactly. And so maybe there's a precedent that there may be some other 
large joint ventures that can be done with some of the existing inhabitants of the biohealth capital region. I'd be very excited to explore that with you and hear more. We're open to any kind of investment to grow ample to be able to commercialize the intellectual property we've developed. Well, that's another action item after this. Fantastic. So we talked a little bit about some of your challenges, but as you look at the future, what do you see as the primary personal and corporate goals that you have? And I'm talking with Dr. Amory Grammer, who's the co-founder and CSO of Ample Biosolutions. And we're at a stage in this podcast where we want to know where she wants to go in the future. What I'm really aiming for is to be able to rapidly grow Ample to make this clinical genomic test a reality make it something that either a patient in a doctor's office or an emergency room, a lupus patient goes in, is in a life-critical flare that a blood test can be done and turned around within an hour or two to get an answer to be able to see what's going on and prescribe the right drug. The parallel to that is to have a test where somebody could have them at home. And we have several partners that have developed a finger stick test that's stable for gene expression that if you're feeling bad or using our mobile app that indicates that you're about to flare, that you can really personalize your care and your approach to medicine, be proactive, decide, you know, I want to do this blood test and really approach your doctor and get the right drugs for you. So I think those two things are the most important. So what are the greatest challenges for you to overcome in order to achieve those challenges? Well, the first one is funding. Okay. I've never done this before. I'm surrounding myself with people that give great advice, and I'm always looking for people that are potentially interested in talking about that. And then figuring out how to grow in a way that maintains the principles of Ample and the scientific integrity and the diligence and perseverance that we've had in the small group as we expand to 50, 100, 200 people. And I think those two challenges are pretty common for people in my position. And I'm, I'm looking forward to my own mentoring and advice to anybody out there who'd love to chat about that. I'm glad that you're open. I'm sure there's some listeners that would love to chat with you. Fantastic. So one of the things we started with was about the biohealth capital region and how you've come to every one of the five forms we've had. So the question is, how has this region been for you personally, for personal growth, as well as founding the company and growing your company within the biohealth capital region? The first thing is the annual meeting. I find very helpful. I bring several people from my company to it. The science is first rate. The openness for collaboration and interaction at both the social times as well as during the meeting is key. And I also enjoy the informational sessions that are given at the meeting from everything to grants to interacting with venture capitalists and other resources that are available. Okay. As a geographical region, other than just the conference, are you able to find all of the generally the talent and other resources you need within the region without having to go externally, or are you dependent externally to bring in some of the professional talent you need? So one of the reasons that I founded Ample in Charlottesville is I know the university very well, and I have a very good relationship. So I've been fortunate to develop a pipeline with the Data Science Institute, which now is being funded to be its own standalone school with the biomedical engineering department, with Darden, which is the business school in immunology. So I've been able to thrive using local talent, and I'm always open to people coming from the outside, and I have a few of those, but I've homegrown the company, I guess you could say. We love homegrown. And now that you've progressed to a point where you're looking for external capital, I don't know if you're aware, but we had our first inaugural Biohealth Capital Region Investment Conference last year. We're going to have another one October 15th and 16th. It's going to be by invitation only. It will be at AstraZeneca. We'll invite about 100 companies, and there will be about 40 investors who are interested in meeting companies looking for capital. And we have some great partners with J.P. Morgan. We have AstraZeneca, Wilson Sonsini Law Firm, Deloitte, and the Maryland Department of Commerce, who are all going to be helping support that conference. So that might be something 
to put on your calendar, maybe apply to attend because you're at a different stage with your company this year and might be a good experience for meeting some investors that might have an interest in Ample. Exciting. I would love to be there. And Wilson Sonsini is a great firm, the people that we work with for all of our patents. And Jeff Guys, who is a senior partner in San Diego, is a UT Southwestern graduate, just like myself from immunology about uh, 10 years ahead of me. So fabulous group to work with. So generally in this industry, we're only one degree of separation for almost anybody, right? Absolutely. So that's what an example. So as we're coming close to the end of this podcast, what are your words of wisdom for fellow entrepreneurs like yourself that you would offer advice to them? I think when you're thinking about finding a company, you really need to do some soul searching and understand what you're truly passionate about and you're willing to go to the mat for because founding a company is even more difficult, I think, than academia in terms of trying to figure out how to put it all together, everything from the people to the money that it takes to keep the doors open and run it every day, as well as having the vision of what you're pushing towards in the future all of the time. Don't be afraid to ask questions, reach out, get advice. I was lucky enough to have Virginia Bio and now the Biohealth Innovation Organization in the Capital Region. So that would be my biggest words of wisdom. Super. Well, I think you're following your own advice. You're practicing what you preach, which is very good. So This has been a very enjoyable half hour, 40 minutes or so working with you. And for the listeners out there, we've been talking with Dr. Amory Grammer, co-founder and chief scientific officer of Ample Biosolutions, located in beautiful Charlottesville, Virginia. And for those who have any questions or would like to follow up, what's your website again? It's Ample. A-M-P-E-L biosolutions.com. And if you're interested in the July 27th celebrity soccer match to raise money for lupus research, that's Relite, R-I-L-I-T-E dot org. And if you don't mind, I'd just like to add, I have an exciting announcement that's going to be coming out on July 9th. So we have a paper in Nature Scientific Reports that will be talking about putting it all together with our clinical genomic test and combining gene expression data with machine learning learning and AI. And I think we're going to have a press release on your website with the podcast. I love breaking news that we can announce on BioTalk. Amory, we're looking forward to that press, which is embargoed until the 9th, but we'll also release your podcast on the 9th as well. So a lot of big news on July 9th after everybody comes back from the 4th of July holiday. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for appearing on BioTalk. Look forward to working with you and we have a number of items to follow up with. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to BioTalk with Rich Bendis. 